Welcome to Forum 360. Thank you for joining us on our global outlook with a local view. This is Leslie Unger, your host today. Campy Russell, Cavalier legend and now Director of Alumni Relations and pre-game and post-game guy, returns to Forum 360 for a record-breaking appearance. He continues the tradition with us of reviewing the past season and a preview of his perspectives on the current roster and the present season. Over the more than a dozen years I have interviewed Campy, I have asked him about the shot, the block, and the ring. Campy, a Michigan native, played for the Cleveland Cavs and the Knicks. He's a very wise and articulate soul, whether he is talking about shooter score or team dynamics. I look forward to his next pearl of wisdom, whether it is about basketball or life. Welcome, Campy. Thank you, Leslie. Welcome. Thank you very much, and happy, uh, I'm going to say healthy, healthy 2020 Absolutely. and beyond. For, for all of us. Thank yes, you. Absolutely. For all of us. First, from a total non-basketball <laughs> expert standpoint, okay, what it looks like to the outside of civilians is LeBron leaves and everything falls apart. <laughs> True or false? Well, if, you, if you're talking about basketball and if you're talking about winning basketball at this particular point I think definitely it has taken um, some steps backwards there's no question about that um, and a lot of that has to do with just the magnitude of our team the magnitude of, um, of LeBron and his skills as well as the other pieces that were around him um, and that that is no longer here but uh, truly um, you know, no one can uh, be upset by the fact that uh, he moved on. Mm -hmm. At least I can't be. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, things have definitely changed a lot uh, since LeBron James and uh, Kyrie Irving and J.R. Smith and a lot of other guys who were a part of those uh, great years for us are no longer here. And now we're moving and going in a totally different direction. So let me ask you. No, I was not the biggest Ty Lue fan because I was a big David Black fan. Um, not unlike David Black before him, he kind of goes from hero to villain in a pretty short period of time. Mm -hmm. So help us understand how a coach goes, and not necessarily Ty Lue, but a coach goes from winning an NBA championship to being an assistant coach. Well, you know, things happen. You know, one, uh, as an example is, uh, just like what just happened here with the Browns, you know, where, you know, the Browns just made some changes. Uh, now, who the coach is going to be, who really knows? But um, I think it's, it goes back to, um, do you want to still be a part of the game? And in some cases, you know, you may have to come from being a, a head coach to maybe an associate coach, and in some cases, maybe an assistant coach. And it all goes down to, you know, what your wants are, whether you want to still be a part of uh, our league, uh, whether you want to continue to work, whether you want to continue to uh, partake in your uh, uh, passion. And all of the coaches uh, have this great passion for the game and being a part of the game. So uh, we all make decisions, you know, whether they are, mm -hmm. whether somebody may look at them and say, well, that was not, that's not a good decision. Why would you go from being a head coach to a, an associate or assistant coach, it just boils down to, I still want to be a part of the game. Okay. I want to be a part of this. And typically that's what happens. So last year, last season was the first season without LeBron. Yes. Which it's, I mean, it seems like it's been a hundred years yes. since LeBron has been here. <laughs> but what, what are some, something or some things that were, were learned from last year? Before we turn to this season, what, are there any lessons learned from last year? Uh, I don't know what it, I mean, when you say lessons learned, um, uh, it's kind of hard for me to say. Okay. Uh, I just look at it as um, um, last year was a tough year uh, for everybody because it was a transition year. It was a year that, you know, we have gone from being on the mountain to being to, to sitting someplace else. So it, it was tough for everybody. Now, I have a question, which I know you can't really answer, but I got to ask it anyways, because you're probably as close. You know, it seemed 
for several years that there were the warriors and there were the Cavs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was so hard for, for Cleveland to beat the, the Warriors. Now, I used to say, you know, they just haven't had any injuries. And now they're decimated, yep. right? So do you think things would have been any different with LeBron, which I know you can't speak for him, but if, if he kind of like knew that well, the Warriors weren't going to stay with him forever, <laughs> would that have changed anything with him staying in Cleveland? I, I, I don't know. I have no idea on that regard. But um, uh, again, is whatever decision that LeBron decided to make for himself, his family, his future, his life after <laughs> basketball, that was a, a great decision that he had to make. And to me, only he and his wife and his family can make that decision. True. Now, let me ask you, and I'm going to ask you just as a player. So mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to kind of put away your, your TV and your pregame and postgame persona. But how do you feel about a lifelong college coach becoming a head coach in professional sports? How do I feel about it? You know, I think, it's a, again, it's an um, opportunity. Uh, is a situation that someone evaluated it and looked at it and identified what their wants were, you know, in terms of uh, the type of coach they wanted and what that coach was going to bring to, in, in this case, our team. Mm -hmm. And uh, picking the coach that we took, uh, Coach Beeline, I think, um, and I don't know what all the criteria were, but I got to believe that it was more about um, in some cases, experiences in coaching period, you know, whether it's college or whatever, but in coaching period, um, ability to deal with younger players uh, because that was obviously the direction that we were going. Uh, but I believe that we got the right guy in terms of Coach Beeline. Uh, he has great experiences, and at the end of the day, it's still basketball. Uh, and he has a vast knowledge of basketball. Uh, I think in this league, it really boils down to uh, having the coaching and more importantly, having the talent and having the experiences and having all the, the, some of the elements that will put you in the best possible position that you can be in. Well, so speaking of it best really just boils down to, uh, for the most part, is picking the coach that you want and hopefully that coach can take you to where you're trying to go. Speaking of best possible, when David Blatt was coach, they gave him an assistant that, that knew a lot about the game from mm -hmm. playing and from coaching when they gave Ty Lu as, as assistant. Is there a similar situation? Is there a, a coach that knows a lot about the, the NBA game that's, that's on staff? Well, yes. You know, uh, Coach Beeline you know, is, is a guy that understands basketball, but then at the same time we have some guys – uh, B.J. Bickerstaff, um, who has come on as uh, his associate assistant uh, or associate coach. Um, uh, I think he had, matter of fact, I know he has a vast knowledge of, of this game and how it's played and, uh, and what goes on in the league. Uh, so I think he's in good hands in, in, in that area. Um, so. That's just a part of uh, people making decisions to who they're going to bring along with them. So that's the basketball side. Yep. But let me ask you the people side. Okay. I can barely, and I lived and died by the game schedule. Okay. For several years, I, I planned my life around right. either sitting on the couch doing work, watching a game, or I would try to see if I could do a whole game on the treadmill. Yes. If I could watch the whole right. game on the treadmill. Okay. Um, now, I can barely name three players. Okay. Now, the reason I ask that is, do you think that the fans have a connection to this team? Um, I believe they do, because at the end of the day, I think it's, the, it's still the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think at the end of the day, they know, you know that LeBron has moved on. They know that we are starting a new process in terms of trying to build a team, a winning team. And I believe that they understand that it's going to be a process, you know, and it starts with Coach Beeline, it starts with his staff of uh, Baker staff, as well as Antonio Lang and, and the rest of his staff. And I just think that the fans come out, they are used to winning, no question. But what they see now is young guys developing, young guys having the opportunity to play. And the only way that you can develop young guys is to put them out there on the floor 
throw them into the fire, coach them, teach them, show them, and hope that their that that accelerate their development because they are young guys. They're 19, they're 20, they're 21 years old, and um, it's just going to be a process. But I think our fans are going along with that process because they understand it, and they have done a great job of coming out nightly to support us. Can you tell us in a sentence or two why Jordan Clarkson was traded? I have no idea. You have no idea? I, I have no idea. I mean, because that's not anything that I would have be privy to at all. But would all. the fans look at it, and don't they, don't they all come up with some kind of, try to come up with some kind of reasoning? Well, you know, that's, that's, that's fans, there's talk shows, there's all kinds of people that has all these different reasons why. Mm -hmm. But I could not sit here and tell you what the reason why it was other than just, you know, this is all a part of the NBA. Those things happen. Now, you talked about young players. Mm -hmm. And um, you've talked in the past, um, and one of my very favorite, it's both an anecdote, a metaphor, and everything is when you talk about shooters and scorers. Mm -hmm. So are there any players that you can identify as being scorers, not shooters? Um, I, for, for what we have on our team, I would say that score guy is, we have, I, actually, I think we have, I'm going to say three of them, and they're all young guys. Yeah, I'm talking about Sexton. I'm talking about uh, uh, Parker, uh, Kevin Parker, I mean, Kevin Porter uh, Jr., and I'm talking about Darius Garland. You know, I believe all those guys have a good uh, skill set and I believe all of them are scorers. They can shoot the ball as well but I think they're scorers because they have the ability to create uh, their own shot, number one. Number two is that they have, um, they have the ability to get to the free throw line which also helps you score the ball and they can mix up the game. They can put the ball on the floor, they can do a lot of different things, they can make plays for each other and for the other teammates so I think those three guys are really good scores, and um, that's how I feel about those young guys. Now, you've talked in the past about chemistry. Mm -hmm. You even talked um, a few years back about the chemistry actually improving on your college team mm -hmm. when, when some of the, quote, better players yep. graduated yep. and, and mm -hmm. your chemistry actually got better, and we've talked about how do you make chemistry happen, whether mm -hmm. it's a team, whether you're a sales team, whether you're a, you know, a, a law firm, a CPA, chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, any thoughts on the chemistry of the current team? Uh, I think it's a work in progress. Um, and a lot of times you don't really know what the chemistry is until you just see it and you feel it and you see the consistency of it. You know, I, that, that's how I look at it um, because you can't, go out there and say, well, I can, I'm going to put these five guys together and that's going to be the chemistry because it may not work. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you put some other guys out there that's just kind of random and then you see that, oh, these guys got a feel for each other. Now, can you put your finger on it and mm -hmm. say, well, this is the reason why? And most of the time, you don't really know what the reason why it is, but you see it and you see it happening on the floor and you see how they come together and how they play well together because of just something that is there in them where it just all comes together. So there, there's no, I don't think there's any real formula to it. It just happens from my perspective and, and my experience with that as well. Today we are talking with Cavalier legend and wise soul, Campy Russell, about the Browns and basketball and life. Your thoughts on resting a player during the season. So you now doing pregame and postgame, I'm sure you, you, you get a lot of sense from the fans. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even saying the Cavs, but, but a, a team somewhere, right. okay, a, a family gets tickets for one game a season, right? They drive 50 miles or they drive 100 miles. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's to see a player on their home team or maybe a team is visiting that has Right. you know, mm -hmm. a, a player um, that they want to see, and, and the team has decided to rest that player for that night. Your thoughts from, you're kind of in the middle between the basketball world and, and the, the world right. of, our, of us mere mortals. Mm -hmm. What are some of your thoughts about that? 
Uh, I just think it's just a part of the game now, you know, where at one point it wasn't so much a part of the game. It was just based upon my own individual ability to go out there on the floor and, and play. And now there's a lot of um, analytical things that are going on. Uh, sometimes it's just, um, as the word they use now, load management, understanding, you know, if, if I play the last three or four or five games and I played 35, 40 minutes or whatever that is, then it's wearing on you. So now you have to make a decision. Do I want to uh, continue to run Campy or to run whoever this player is? Or do I say to myself, let me, let me talk to him, talk to Campy and see how he feels. And then let's make a decision about, hey, how do you feel today? Do you think you can go? And most of the time they may come in and say, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. But then as they, they think they go, because they want to go because that's how we are as athletes. We want to play. But then after you start warming up and you, you, don't, you don't really feel it, then you may make a decision. Hey, you know, Coach, you know, the conversation we had earlier, um, you know, maybe I don't, I don't need to go tonight. You know, the, the analytics or the information mm -hmm. that you guys have here is speaking to that, and I'm going to go with that. So I understand the fans' perspective of, mm -hmm. hey, you know, we've driven, we pay for these tickets to come see uh, whoever this player is. And now we're finding out once we get there that they're not there. And the, and the league is just trying to, to preserve, in my opinion, preserve the, uh, the player, re, uh, preserve the integrity of the game, all those type of, type of things. And there's always going to be some controversial things that's going to occur that everybody's not going to like. Speaking of controversial, um, last month I interviewed Andre Thornton, the mm -hmm. former yep. Indian player. Very, like and I, very, very well. I, I had a question I wanted to ask him and I ran out of time, so I'm going to ask you. Because okay. I could ask every, every former player of any sport. When Michael Jordan was inducted into the Hall of Fame, I think it was in his kind of odd acceptance speech, he said he, <laughs> he felt sorry for his kids, being mm -hmm. the kids of Michael Jordan. Yep. Was it hard being kids of Campy Russell? I don't, th I don't think so, you know. Um, they may say so, you know, but, um, and I'm not in their shoes and I'm not, I don't think about what some of the stuff they may be thinking mm -hmm. and I'm not, I'm not uh, sure about the pressures that come with being an athlete or a whatever, um, son or daughter, I don't, I don't know what those pressures are, you know, because I never came up under them. So um, it's kind of hard for me to answer that question. I would have to, you know, but then, but then again, sometimes my son would say something about it, or my daughter to him, you know, saying, "Well, you know, you don't know how hard it is to be a Russell." I said, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. You know, because we are Russells, you know, and I'm like, "Well, you know, we're just like everybody else," you know. So I can see it from Michael's standpoint. Mm -hmm because he's so big, you know, and so because of their, they see his sons and say, well, why aren't you like Mike? We want right. to be like Mike, but why aren't you like Mike? Right. And that can really weigh heavily on a, on, on a, on a person. As, as you know, I was a big black fan. Haven't yes. let go of that yet. No, no, okay. no, no I you have, have not. not. You have not. <laughs> you, you've been true to that. I have. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> What do you see when you see that him going on the on the um, in the front office at the mm -hmm. Knicks? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what do you see that someone can can bring from their perspective, having coached for a few decades? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to, to make that make that determination because I don't know what the reasons were behind it. You know, so I think that I would be kind of out of school to even try to talk about it because I don't know what some of the things are behind that, other than uh, he's there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Now, let me, and, and maybe he can improve. <laughs> no one else has been able to, but I said that, not you. Okay. Um, what makes a difference between, is there, is there a difference between a coach that's a good coach for the regular season? Does that mean that he's a good coach for the playoffs? Or is it a different skill set for the playoffs than it is the regular season? I think a good coach is a good coach, coach. you know. No matter what the situations are, I think the stakes are a lot higher when you, once you start going into the playoffs because the expectations become greater. But, um, you know, I think it's a combination of the coach as well as the players 
having the ability to take it to a different level because it will require you to take your game to a different level to be successful, particularly if you got the, the, the talent and the skill set and the great, uh, I'm going to say camaraderie between the teams, between the players, then it's, it's up to you to be able to take it to another notch because you're going to be playing against a more consistent teams, teams that are just as skilled as you are. So now it's going to come down to who can take their game to another level and do it for a sustained amount of time. That, that's, a, that's, that's how it normally will. will so when be. we talk about another level, you know, pretty much, again, you may see it differently as, as a player and a former player, but mm -hmm. Popovich is pretty much seems to be considered the saint of coaches <laughs> in the NBA. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> right? Yeah, okay, yeah. so what makes him the saint of coaches? He's had talent. He's had great, great, great talent for an a extended period of time. You know, started with David Robinson. Then it came with Tim Duncan. Then Ginobili. Then there's Tony Parker. And there were some other guys that was a part of that great run. And now you kind of look at that, uh, that same team. Um, are they as talented as what they used to be? I would say not so. Um, are they still trying to be the team that they can be? Yes, because of... Um, the culture that was that's part of the Spurs team uh, of teams that that is, but at the end of the day, it's going to come down to talent and how the coach make that talent, or they all coexist within that talent and within that structure. So let me ask you: you own a team of any sport, mm -hmm. and you you need both a general manager and a coach. Which one do you hire first? <laughs> You're getting into that uh, Cleveland Brown thing. Huh? Well, no, I mean, because he could only coach the players that were given to him, or whether he was a part in getting them, or whether it was a separate group yeah, that got I, I the get players. It, I get it. I get it. Right? He could only coach yeah, the talent, and right. you said talent was 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 the answer. Right. So, like, which comes first? Well, I, I guess it depends upon you know your ownership in terms of what their philosophies are and how they want to go by the process. You know, I would think that would be the hierarchy of the owner, the general manager, and the coach. I don't think it would be the owner, the coach, and the general manager. So with that being said, I think it would have to, for me, I think it would have to go back to the pecking order of the owner, general manager. Organizational charts, just like yeah. in any company. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. It, to me, it would not be a coach, mm -hmm. and then you turn around and say, well, we're going to let the coach hire the general manager. No, it, it, it don't. In, in my opinion, it doesn't work that, that way. way. No. In the two minutes we have remaining, I'm going to ask for um, short answers so I can get in as many questions okay. as I can. In one of your past visits, you talked about how some players are curious to see how much better they can be. Mm -hmm. Are there any current players that are curious that you could have seen about how much better they can be? Well, I think all the young guys that we have on our team is that way, you know, from Jetty, from um, the, the, the three, four young guys that we have on our team now. They want to continue to be curious and continue to develop their game. So all those guys that we have on, on our team, they have that type of man, mindset. Now it's going to go down to how hard are they willing to go out and work. And I believe they're all workers. So I believe it's all going to turn out. Whether it's the Cavs or the Clemson team, how much of coming back from a deficit is mental and how much is physical? I think it's both, you know, because, um, you know, it takes a lot out of you, you know, mentally and physically. And, um, it, and it takes a lot of will. And then once you get back in the lead or tie the game up, you still have to take it the rest of the way home. So it's all, it's, it, it takes a lot out of you, either way. The last game you played, what was the last game you played? Do the last game? Mm-hmm. Mm, it must have been back in 1984. Did you know at the time it was going to be your last game? Uh, no, I did not. I've heard that. No, from, I did not. I've heard that from no, athletes. No, 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 I did not. Mm -mm. What living person do you most admire? That's, so wow. Mm. I, I would say it's two that I can say right off the bat. And um, 
One of them is a guy named Dave Bing, and the other guy is uh, Lenny Wilkins. Okay. Um, and the reason why I say that is because both of those guys are just outstanding people. Uh, they are gracious. They are guys that, uh, that are so committed to any and everything that they do. And that is something that, you know, I want to be able to emulate and I want other people to look at me in that same way. Is there a talent that you would most like to have? Mm, a talent that I would most like to have? <laughs> Oh, wow. I, no one's never asked me that. See, the, well, know, look how no great one, that no, you have no, talents no, no, that, that, no, no that have served you well. No one has never asked me that, so <laughs> it's kind of hard to answer that one. <laughs> Good. I'm glad I could ask you a question. No one asked I'm you. I'm stumped after 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us today on Forum 360, your global outlook with a local view. This has been Leslie Unger, your host. Each year I say that Campy Russell is a really, really, really interesting person. He's shared his thoughts on the game and life. Thank you for joining us. We know Northeast Ohio is better for Campy and the Cavs. Thank you. Forum 360 is brought to you by John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron, Blue Green, Electric Impulse Communications, and Forum 360 supporters.